So let me start again. I'm just also I'm going to talk about Lucy Knight, which is a Pathfinder Ray Telescope on the far side of the moon. Um, and thanks, uh, Jack, for kind of introducing us um, and Maria for giving this uh, great introduction to CLIPS. Um, so let me, I have just 10 minutes, so I want to, to give you just what's the take home message and then I'll go more into detail uh, about what Lucy Knight really is, right? It's a Pathfinder Ray Telescope to the lunar far side. Um, and I think its main goal really is to characterize the lunar far side as a radio observatory. Uh, and I'll, people have been dreaming about doing this for ages and we're actually now trying for real. Uh, it will observe in the 0.51 to about 50 megahertz band using processor and antenna. And it's interestingly, it's collaboration between the Department of Energy, which does fundamental physics, uh, things like CERN, uh, um, uh, you know, LHC and stuff like that, colliders and some astronomy as well in cosmology and NASA and it's now fully funded. Uh, and it's scheduled to land on the moon in January 26 as a part of the CLIPS uh, CS4 mission. Okay, so the big, I would say, platonic ideal here is the is the dark ages. Okay, so the cosmic dark ages are this unique period in the history of the universe uh, after the cosmic background was formed. So af after the light has decoupled from 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 the so the initial plasma and before the first star has been known. So there is no radiation sources. So you get linear physics and you can calculate pretty much everything using perturbation theory. GR atomic physics to to just using perturbative methods to basically a number of, of significant figures. However, because there are no sources, you cannot observe it. And the only way to observe it is through the 21 centimeter uh, neutral hydrogen line. Um, and I would say if you could observe it, it would be phenomenal. There are the clear parallels with CMB. So CMB had monopole discovered in 65 and got kind of a Nobel Prize for it. And the fluctuations, basically small fluctuations in the structure of the cosmic background were discovered in 1990s and another Nobel Prize got it. And the same two things exist in dark ages. We hope to see dark, dark ages monopole in sometimes the next 10 years, and then hopefully fluctuations detect this in the next 50 years and hopefully get two more Nobel Prizes because in some sense it's like CMB, but in three dimensions. Uh, and this has actually been kind of recognized uh, by the decadal survey, which kind of in the in the panel of cosmology kind of says, you know, as a community, we should be working towards kind of enabling uh, 10 centimeter uh, observations of dark ages. Now, the other context is that, of course, people have been dreaming about building radio telescopes on the moon for decades, right? Uh, the decades are right here, okay? So, uh, and you can find like the concepts from Apollo Tice, 1950s in the picture up here. Uh, in the modern incarnation, you have LCRT, which is like Beaker Recibo uh, in, in a crater. We have Farsight, we have Jack Burns as, as, a, as a PI. And you have this ALO, Astronomical Lunar Observatory, which we heard talks about on, tu on Tuesday uh, by Brinkerink and Gosh. Uh, but these are all kind of big, many billion of dollar sized projects. And you need to start somewhere simpler, right? Um, it is widely believed that the Lunar Farsight is one of the best places to do low frequency observations, right? Uh, it's shielded from Earth and Sun at night, right? So you get no, you, you put, it's extremely radio quiet at low frequency. You see no, you see basically no radio interference from, from the Earth. Uh, it has no atmosphere, it has no ionosphere. And we have even some kind of indirect detection from this RE2, which kind of you can see how uh, the data went, you know, when the, when the, when the instrument went behind the, the, the moon, basically it became extremely radio quiet, right? This was in, in uh, 70s, right? However, it has weak plasma magnetic fields. Uh, it has electromagnetically very complicated regoliths. Um, there might be other things we don't know about. So this has, nothing, has never been tried in practice, okay? Uh, so overarching science goals, plus night is basically, uh, it's just a pathfinder for the of science. And we want to establish lunar surface as a viable observatory for low frequency radio astronomy, perform the most sensitive observations of the sky up to 50 megahertz with basically 20% absolute collaboration. And then quantify, really trying to understand, you know, what would it take? What are the dominant systematic effects, uh, effects affecting the global spectrum measurement accuracy and how to mitigate them? And then as a, as a science goal, kind of constrain the, the non-smooth monopole component of basically one part in a thousand. Now, uh, for clarification, Lucy Knight used to, is part of Lucy. The or originally, it used to be just Lucy and then it split into two projects, right? So what, what used to be Lucy was initially a single payload manifested on CP12 mission. Uh, if, you, if you followed Maria, you would know what. And it was done purely because spare available parts for risk reduction, okay? And then after, you know, very complicated, long story, DOE got involved and, uh, and the project now consists of, of two payloads. There is a Lucy Light, um, which we spell differently in DOE land. Uh, it's a small day only payload on CP12. Um, and it's basically like original Lucy, but, you know, without station antennas. And then also Lucy Knight, which is basically 
uh, it's really kind of this Pathfinder right was come talking about, which survives night, and we hope to survive many nights, and is the main payload on CS3, right? It's a much more powerful instrument, and hopefully with the perfect calibration. Uh, so this is how our payload looks like. We have we have basically uh, uh, three meter uh, uh, station antennas arranged in these kind of uh, cross configurations. So there's the six meter tip to tip, and importantly, they're on turntable. So we can turn everything around and kind of change our polarization sensitivity plus also kind of, you know, move one into another to, to understand systematics, okay? It has 50 megahertz bandwidth for channel bandwidth receiver, and we calculate all combinations. Now from 14 uh, inputs, you get 16 correlation products, okay? Uh, it will use the ESA Pathfinder for communications. We have a six gigabytes per lunar night, uh, and we have, there was a Christy talks about this on Tuesday. Uh, and basically during daytime, we do some science, but mostly we kind of charge, we turn, we do, 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 do the turntable, but during night, everything shuts off when you just listen to the, this beautiful uh, quiet sky, right? Um, so one, one of the big thing of low frequency observations is EMI, especially from, from, from spacecraft. You know, there were a couple of you know, experiments uh, that were less successful than they could have been due to this EMI. We are very, very careful with EMI. Part of this thing is that the spacecraft dies completely after, after the first uh, sunset, right? And we have, we have very strange requirements. It, it's, actually, it's actually dead, right? I'll talk a little bit more of this later. Uh, the land excitement is selected. Again, thanks, Maria, for, for helping with this thing. So we've got a great site. On the far side, minus 180 and slightly south for, for, for communication reasons, okay? Uh, and the total payload mass is 120 kilos, out of which over 40 kilos is just battery because we need to survive somehow the, the, the lunar night, okay? Uh, this is again how the payload looks with antenna stowed. This is our lander. It will, it will go on the Blue Ghost 2 mission. Uh, we are on top of it. This is JPL user terminal, another payload on this thing. Um, and uh, we have a battery pack, electronics box, a little motor here that kind of turns the turntable on top. Uh, we have an antenna and it's four stacers within the housings, the, the, the preamps, and then this turntable, turntable turns. And then we have some, some basically solar panels on, on, on top and on, on the sides. Uh, and we have this radiator in the back. So the way how we do thermal management, which is very tricky, to survive both the day and the night is basically we use cell generated heat from 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 operations of, of the instrument uh, to keep warm enough at night with with some some insulation. But during the day we have this uh, we have this pipe that kind of turns on and kind of injects excessive heat through this radiator, which is in the back, which will be pointing south into the free space. It's developed by JPL. This is basically a system that's been going to be tested in the vast for for FSS. Uh, we know FSS FSSSS experiment on CP12. Uh, we have a very good spectrometer. Basically, it's nominally the 2000 channel polyphase filter bank. Uh, we, we took the PSP spectrometer as a basis. We went from two to four channels from to six in correlation for, uh, products, 50 megahertz bandwidth, a lot of fancy stuff, notch filters, zoom regions, far field calibration support, and so on. Uh, and we can do the, all this thing in uh, two watts. And basically, uh, 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 it's basically kind of 200 improvements in performance, basically at approximately the same power draw. You know? Some of this came from, from better FPGA, some of this is uh, just um, uh, better code, okay? Uh, so the way we do EMI control from the self EMI, lander dice will still be producing EMI. So we have this trick where kind of we force any, any kind of electronics our thing to use power switching supplies at 100 kilohertz, which is century clock to the same clock, the same master clock that drives our ADCs. So this produces this, puts all the EMI noise on, on, on this perfectly perfectly uh, made fans in you know, 100 kilohertz space. And then we use DSP trickery to, to have like a 60 dB notch in the middle of our bin response uh, to kind of just cut it out completely, right? So this would be kind of uh, various measurements. And this is just a demonstration on the actual PSP waveform run for our algorithm uh, showing you can measure power spectrum uh, and just kill out all these, uh, all these um, uh, picket fans EMI uh, very well, okay? And finally, uh, we also managed to convince NASA to, 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 to give us a part field calibrator. Again, in any radio experiment, especially low frequency calibration is the beginning and end of everything. So we have this concept basically where kind of the, there will be a, a part field uh, calibrator emitting kind of a coded signal, which is actually not going to be bright, it's fainter than the galaxy, uh, but it's going to be detected in cross correlation uh, and then give us basically both spatial and absolute calibration uh, all over the entire sky, okay? Um, and basically, this is now being done as a provision of calibration service, right? So this will be different. This will be clips provide payload for the CS formation. So NASA is really kind of trying to exercise like a different way of doing this thing where they don't contract uh, like a payload delivery, but the provision of service. 
Uh, and the proposal version is go ongoing, and then we expect a decision by end of July, which could be either this is going forward or basically NASA decided that none, none of the proposal are, are cheap enough or basically good enough. Uh, I'm okay. I'm over time, so I have just one more slide, so I'll, I'll go over it. I, ex I expected some horrible noise. It didn't happen, so okay. Uh, fine. Uh, so so th th these are basically the, the sensitivity plot. This is where we stand at the moment. So on the y-axis is the temperature. On the x-axis, basically frequency of these, these are dark edges froth. The real signal expects it to be this blue dot here. And you see these are our limits, basically, depending on the width. And we see we can cover a couple of orders magnet off, but uh, we are still kind of a couple of orders, uh, orders magnet down below from where we are now. So we, 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 are, we will be the first step in going down to measure this, to take this monopole, okay? Uh, and this is my conclusions. You see this beautiful rendering, uh, rendering of the of the uh, uh, basically blue ghost two with Lucy Knight on top and also up here.